Let's see about the classification of cataract. Cataract refers to the development of any opacity in the lens or its capsule. Classification of cataract. Based on the etiology, cataract can be classified into congenital and developmental cataract or acquired cataract. Congenital and developmental cataract, there is formation of opaque lens fibers. And in the acquired cataract, this is because of a degenerative process which leads to opacification of the normally formed transparent lens fibers. Next classification is the morphological classification in which the cataract is divided into capsular, subcapsular, cortical, supranuclear, nuclear and polar cataract. Capsular cataract, it involves the lens capsule. It is further of two types, anterior, capsular and posterior capsular cataract. Next is subcapsular cataract. It involves the superficial most part of the cortex just below the capsule. This is also further of two types, anterior subcapsular and posterior subcapsular cataract. Third is cortical cataract which involves the major part of the cortex of lens. Fourth is supranuclear which is just outside the nucleus. Nuclear involving the nucleus of the crystalline lens. Polar cataract in which the capsule and the superficial part of the cortex is involved in the polar region only. This is also of two types anterior polar or pyramidal and posterior polar cataract. The subcapsular cataract and the pyramidal cataract are together called as reduplicate cataract. So these are the different morphological classifications of cataract. The posterior subcapsular, the coronary that is the peripheral cataract, anterior cortical cataract, subcapsular cataract, pyramidal cataract together called as reduplicate cataract, the nuclear cataract, lamellar cataract and posterior polar cataract. This is the anterior subcapsular and the posterior subcapsular cataract. Now let's see some of the differences between the congenital and developmental cataracts. Congenital cataract occurs when there is disturbance in the normal growth of lens which occurs before birth. Whereas the developmental cataract may occur from the infancy to the adolescence. In congenital cataract, the opacity is limited to the embryonic or the fetal nucleus. In the developmental cataract, the opacities involve the infantile or the adult nucleus and deeper parts of the cortex. The congenital cataract have variegated appearance and their minute opacity. The developmental cataract affects the particular zone being formed in this process. Congenital cataract is detected with the beam of slit lamp under full midriasis. And in developmental cataract, the fibers laid down previously and subsequently are clear. Only a particular zone of fibers are affected. Etiology of cataract about one third are idiopathic, one third are hereditary, and rest one third are due to other maternal or fetal causes. The maternal causes include infections, which include torch infections, rubella, and the rubella is associated with cataract in 50% of the cases. Vaccination of adult females is done to prevent these infections. Other infections include toxoplasmosis and cytomegalovirus infection. Next is malnutrition during pregnancy due to inadequate intake of vitamin B, C and E. Ingestion of certain drugs like steroids and thalidomide during pregnancy can also lead to cataract. Next radiation, maternal exposure to x-rays and other radiation during pregnancy. All these are maternal factors which involve in development of congenital cataract. Next the fetal factors. The fetal factors can be remembered with the mnemonic A, B, C. A for anoxia and hypoxia due to placental hemorrhage. B for birth defects due to instrumental delivery and C for congenital anomalies and syndrome such as Lewis syndrome, Down syndrome, Alport syndrome and in congenital ichthyosis. And it is also seen in metabolic disorders like galactosemia. These are the fetal factors responsible for the development of congenital cataract. 
Next, the clinical types. The types include congenital capsular cataract, which in turn has anterior and posterior capsular, polar cataract, in turn having anterior and posterior polar cataract, nuclear cataract, lamellar cataract, sutural and axial cataracts, which include floriform, coralliform, spear shaped, anterior axial embryonic cataracts, and sixth is generalized cataracts. This generalized cataracts include coronary cataract, blue dot cataract total congenital cataract and congenital membranous cataract. Lamellar cataract also called as Rider's cataract. This is a developmental cataract in which the opacity occupies a discrete zone in the lens and this lamellar cataract is the most common type of congenital cataract with visual impairment about 40 percent. Etiology genetic it is acquired as autosomal dominant and environment because of vitamin D deficiency, hypocalcemia, maternal rubella in the first trimester that is in 7th and 8th weeks of gestation. Features of lamellar cataract are two rings of opacity are seen and small linear opacities like the spokes of a wheel can be seen towards the equator. So this is a picture of lamellar cataract. The small linear opacities like the spokes of a wheel are seen towards the equator and two rings of opacities are seen. Next generalized cataracts, blue dot cataract also called as cataracta punctata carulia. This is the most common type of congenital cataract which is not visually significant. The one that is visually significant and the most common is the lamellar cataract. Punctate opacities in the form of rounded bluish dots are seen in the peripheral nucleus and the deep cortex. In coronary cataract, the opacities are many in number radial in distribution in the periphery of the lens. So, there is corona of club shaped opacity. So, this is the coronary cataract. Opacities are many in number radially arranged in the periphery of the lens. These are all the opacities which are arranged in a club shape manner. And in the coronary cataract, the vision is unaffected. Total congenital cataract, here the whole of the lens is occupied. This is an image of total congenital cataract. Congenital rubella syndrome which is the most important cause of congenital cataract. The classical rubella syndrome consists of a triad of three features, ocular defects, ear defects and heart defects. The ocular defects include congenital cataract, which is nuclear pearly white cataract associated with microphthalmos, salt and pepper chorioretinopathy and cloudy cornea. Ear defects include sensory neural hearing loss and heart defects like patent ductus arteriosus pulmonary stenosis and ventricular septal defect. This is a triad of the congenital rubella syndrome, ocular defect, ear defect and heart defect. And the lens matter may remain soft. Removal of such cataract is followed by severe inflammation, uveitis or endophthalmitis. Next is sutural cataract. Sutural cataract, there is series of punctate opacities around the anterior and the posterior Y suture. The types of sutural cataract include floriform, coralliform, spear shaped, anterior axial embryonic cataract. Nuclear cataract in which the first is cataracta centralis pulverulenta. This is embryonic nuclear cataract occurs due to inhibition of lens development at a very early stage and the opacity has a powdery appearance that is why this is called as pulverulenta and this does not affect vision. Next, total nuclear cataract is characterized by a dense chalky white central opacity which seriously impairs the vision. This involves the embryonic, fetal and infantile nucleus. The differential diagnosis for congenital cataract. The congenital cataract presenting with leukocoria needs to be differentiated from retinoblastoma, retinopathy of prematurity and persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, PHPV etc. So, all these present with leukocoria, which is white pupillary reflex. Management. First is ocular examination. 
examining for density, morphology, assessment of visual function and associated defects, laboratory investigations like torch test, urine test for RBC transferase and galactokinase levels, x-ray, urine chromatography, blood sugar levels, serum calcium and phosphate levels, prognostic factors like density of cataract, unilateral or bilateral, the time of presentation, associated ocular and systemic defects. All these indicate the prognosis of the cataract. Next, finally coming to the management. Indications and timing of pediatric surgery. Bilateral dense cataract should be removed early within 6 weeks of birth to prevent stimulus deprivation amblyopia that is the lazy eye. Whereas the unilateral dense cataract should be removed as early as possible within days after birth with optical correction in the first few weeks. So the unilateral dense cataract should be removed as early as possible within few days after birth. Whereas the bilateral dense cataract should be removed early within 6 weeks of birth to prevent stimulus deprivation amblyopia. Surgical procedures include lensectomy, correction of pediatric aphakia by using posterior chamber eye oil and correction of amblyopia. Next coming to the types of acquired cataract which include senile cataract, traumatic cataract, complicated cataract, metabolic cataract, electrical cataract, radiational cataract, toxic cataract, cataract associated with skin disease, cataract associated with osseous disease that is the bone disorders and the cataract with miscellaneous syndromes like dystrophica myotonica, Down syndrome, Lewis syndrome and richard Collins syndrome. The toxic cataract can be corticosteroid induced, meiotic induced, copper and iron induced cataracts. The metabolic cataracts that is the cataracts occurring due to endocrine disorder and biochemical abnormality. First is diabetic cataract. Senile cataract in diabetes appears at early age like 50 years and progresses rapidly. True diabetic cataract is also called a snowflake cataract and it is a rare condition. This occurs due to accumulation of sorbitol when glucose is metabolized by aldol reductase. Next is galactosemic cataract which is the only reversible cataract also called oil droplet cataract. This is prevented when milk and milk products are eliminated at an early stage. Next is cataract due to error of copper metabolism. This occurs in Wilson's disease also called a sunflower cataract. Ocular feature is presence of golden colored caser flesher ring due to deposition in the peripheral part of decimates membrane in the cornea. Then the fourth is tetanic cataract and fifth is cataract in Lewis syndrome. Complicated cataract, opacification of the lens secondary to some other intraocular disease is called as complicated cataract. This is also called as secondary cataract. Etiology, inflammatory conditions like uveal inflammation, degenerative conditions like high myopia, retinitis pigmentosa, glaucoma, intraocular tumors, long standing retinal detachment. Clinical features. In the slit lamp examination, there is breadcrumb appearance of opacities. An appearance of colored patches called polychromatic luster is seen which consists of red, green and blue. So this is also called as rainbow cataract. Most common presentation is posterior subcapsular cataract or posterior cortical cataract. So this is all about the general outline and the classification of cataract. Thank you.